In chapter 1.2, we begin looking at evaluating formulas, and we use formulas in everyday life to understand um, various numbers, how they relate to one another. For instance, in a quadrilateral, any regular quadrilateral, whether it's a, a rectangle or a parallelogram, um, so forth, we know that the area is, in this case, a, le a rectangle. We, we can call it the length times the width. But another way of putting it is the base times the height, right? Let's, let's use different terms. So that if, say, we're looking at something like this parallelogram, what we can do is we can drop a perpendicular here, and whatever this base is, whatever this base B is, we can multiply it by the height, and we will get the area of this parallelogram. Um, so area is, uh, if you look at a triangle, say, a triangle, you have, once again, you have a base times this vertical here, height. And the area of a triangle, so for these guys, the area is area equals base times the height. For a triangle, the area equals one half of the base times the height. And, and that should be pretty obvious because if I were just to extend this out a little bit, I would essentially have a parallelogram, right? This area here is half of a whole parallelogram. So if I take half of that, then I'll have the area of that parallelogram. There's another uh, another thing called a trapezoid. Trapezoid. And with a trapezoid, it's also an irregular kind of partial parallel. Sorry, partial uh, parallelogram. And it's got these sides are uneven. See, these sides are the same length typically in a regular one. But uh, the top and the bottom are both uh, uneven sides. So the formula here for the area is one half of the quantity that is the height times a plus b. And so that's, that's the formula for the area of that that object. And and so we can understand how if I were to give you a base and a height, let's say uh, this trapezoid has a height of 4, an A of 3, and a B of 8, we'll say, then the area of that is I just use those as my substitution values, right? A is equal to 1 half of 4 times um, 3 plus 8. And so I would use now my um, my order of operations in order to solve this, in order to evaluate this. So 4 times 11, that'd be 2 times 11, which would be 22. So the area of this is 22, and let's say it's in centimeters just for the sake of argument. Um, so that's that's using an area to evaluate formulas, but we use formulas for all kinds of things. We can use formulas for areas. We can use formulas for perimeter, which would be in the case of this uh, rectangle, the area of a rect. I mean, the, not the area. The perimeter of a rectangle is two times the length plus two times the width. So if I knew the length and the width. I can then evaluate it to find the perimeter. Um, at the beginning of the module, we had a problem with handshakes. And so there is a formula for discovering the number of handshakes based on the number of people. And that formula is n times n uh, minus 1, in this case minus 1, over 2. Uh, sum of a series was the one where Carl Gauss figured this out, and his is n times n plus 1. 
divided by 2. And these are essentially the same things. They're, they're both based on triangular numbers. So in this case, if I say I have six people in a meeting, then I do 6 times 6 minus 1 over 2, or 30 over 2, which is then 15 handshakes. And if I want to know the sum of the first 20 numbers, then I would do uh, 20 times uh, 20 plus 1 over 2, or 40, uh, let's see, 420, not 40, 420 over 2, or 210. So that's um, evaluating uh, a formula when you uh, substitute values or when you use substitution values in it. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to solve these formulas for the different variables that are involved.